Just north of Halls Creek, you'll find the Pernalulu National Park. Until 1983, this area was known only to the local cattle stations and the area's Aboriginal population. In that year, a cattle muster pilot tipped off a documentary crew filming wonders of Western Australia, and they made the region famous. So famous, in fact, that the area was declared a national park in 1987, before becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2003, the same honour bestowed on Uluru and the Great Barrier Reef, two arguably much more well-known locations. The Road Inn, on the other hand, is not befitting any honour whatsoever, and the constant tour bus traffic has corrugated the road horrifically. There's some creek crossings which can be deep, and you will need a four-wheel drive to enter the park, if you're not arriving on one of the tour buses, that is. The 53km drive from the highway to the visitor centre typically takes about one to two hours to traverse. Our first stop is the Kunkalanyi Lookout, about two and a half kilometres from the visitor centre. This has a very good view of the Bungle Bungle Range, the star attraction of the National Park. But next up, we're going to head right to the end of the northern branch and work our way back. First, the Osmand Lookout, showing the nearby Osmand Range. No relation to the app, but interesting nonetheless. This one's a very short walk from the car park. Then we head into Echidna Chasm. This walk takes you about a kilometre into a narrow chasm, about 200 metres high in places with red sandstone walls. Unfortunately, the walkway at the end has collapsed, and you can no longer go all the way in, but you certainly can go in far enough to see most of the chasm. We head back down the track and park at the Bloodwoods car park. The Bloodwoods lookout is somewhere around here, but it turns out that it's just the tiny hill next to the car park. Mystery solved, we head on to Mini Palms Gorge. The paths in this national park are left in their natural state, in a way that a lot of other parks don't. This section has some very narrow gaps between boulders on the path, with the path passing right between them. I'm surprised how these are fixed. No, I rested my hand on one before and moved, so... Yeah. Then we reached Mini Palms Gorge, filled with its not-so-miniature palms. From here, some stairs rise further into an observation platform for another rock chasm.
and then reaching the car park again, we turned around and headed on to the next destination, along a path that was much more formed than the previous ones. Next up is Homestead Valley. This features a sale for shade and signs detailing the history of when the area was a homestead and cattle station. On our way out of Halls Creek we got a windscreen chip from a stone kicked up by a truck. Unfortunately a crack is now formed from that chip so we'll apply some UV setting epoxy to it to hopefully stop it from spreading all the way across. We will need to replace the windscreen when we get back home though, as this isn't a permanent fix. The crack's now completely invisible, but will it open up again? At this point we head over to the south fork of the track, to the Waladi campground. We're staying for two nights, and on the second day we're exploring the south side of the range. This side's arguably the more famous one, and approaching it we can see the famous rock formation. Layers of cyanobacteria in the rock result in the iconic horizontal stripes on the weathered beehive domes. The features provide their own contour lines. We're going to head three kilometres out to the end of the track, and then another kilometre up to the furthest site, Whipsnake Gorge. If you're dedicated and have all of the equipment though, you can keep going beyond this. A further 7 kilometers from here and you get to the elbow, the start of the Piccaninny Gorge. A further 4 kilometers in and you get to the fingers, a set of 5 gorges deep into the middle of the range. But you'll need at least 2 to 3 days to explore all of that. The walk goes down Piccaninny Creek, which is wide but not so flat. There's sections of angled rock, boulders, stones, gravel and sand, so it's not the easiest going. The width also means it's all fairly exposed to the sun, and hence quite warm. The inside of Whipsnake Gorge was a lot cooler than the track up Piccaninny Creek, a welcome relief from the weather that was already starting to warm up. Back from Whipsnake, the next site is the window. By this point the sun was very much out and it was getting quite warm. But we got to the furthest point first, to maximise the amount of walking we do early in the day, when it's still cooler. You've done the one with the shape. At this point, we turned off to head towards the Piccaninny Creek lookout.
This lookout offers a view of another range and more domes from the backside of this range. Back from there, dodging and exiting tour group, we entered the cathedral. It's a massive chasm between rocks, the sheer scale of which defies perception and non-ultra-wide lenses. Heading back to the car, we cover the domes loop, which enters a small cave called the Mini Cathedral. Back at the campsite, we refill the tanks with water. The campground has untreated bore water available, so we filter it through the MSR Guardian before putting it into the tanks to make it safe to drink without having to boil first. There's a walk at the campground that's not mentioned in the park notes. Going down the dry river and around a bunch of trees, it gives you a view of the range from much further away. With the sun starting to go down, we head back to the north branch of the park. There's one more walk there we didn't do yesterday, Stonehenge. This walk features a bunch of native plants and interpretive signs that show how these plants were used by the local Aboriginal people. But there's one last thing to do, get up the Kunkalenya lookout in time for sunset. After a second night at the campground, it was time to head off and head on. Well, with a detour back to Halls Creek for fuel first. Join us in the next video, wherever we end up next. Until then, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and see you next time. <laughs>